If you want to know the easiest way to set up and deploy a new serverless project, then this video is for you. Hi guys, I'm Sam with Complete Coding, and in this video, we're gonna be using serverless templates to create and set up a new serverless project. We're then going to be looking at what makes up a serverless project and how we can deploy it. So I hope you enjoy it and we'll jump into the code right now. Now we're back in the terminal, we can set up our serverless folder and create our project using a serverless CLI command. To create a new folder, we can use serverless create and we're going to be using a dash dash template and we're going to be using AWS and Node.js for this project. So luckily there is a template called AWS dash Node.js, which is great for us. And as well as that, we need to specify the path that we want to build this template into. So I'm going to use my serverless project and hit enter. So what this serverless command has done is created a template inside the folder of my serverless project with all of the serverless code that we need. So if we CD into my serverless project and list out all the files, we can see that we have a handler.js and a serverless YAML. So if we move into VS Code, we can now have a look at the handler.js and serverless YAML files. So I've opened up the my serverless project folder. And inside we can see we have the handler.js and serverless.yaml file. If we open up the serverless YAML file, we get a load of comments saying, welcome to serverless. We have a service of my serverless project provider, which has some details about the name we're using AWS, and we'll be using Node.js 10. And if we scroll down, we also have a list of functions, which at the moment has one called hello, and it sets the handler to be handler.hello. This is pointing at the handler.js file, so we'll have a look into there. So inside this JavaScript file, we are exporting a function called hello, which is an async, async event. And we're returning a status code of 200 and an object which has a message of go serverless, your function executed successfully and an event. So if we go back into our serverless YAML file, we've got a small change that we need to make. When we set up the AWS and serverless credentials, we set up a profile. That means that if we want to deploy using those credentials, we've got to add a profile to the provider. This is as simple as doing profile and then the name of our profile, which was serverless user. So now if we save this file, we can open up a terminal and inside this folder, we can just run SLS deploy. SLS is just short for serverless and then we want to deploy everything in this folder. So if we hit run, what's going to happen is it's going to create a serverless config file and then that is going to create a cloud formation template which is going to then build all of the resources and things inside this account. This does take a little while to complete, so I'll get back to you when that's done. So now that serverless deploy has finished, we can look at the output. The output is a service with a stage of dev deployed to US East one, and the stack is my serverless project dash dev. And down here in functions, we can see we have a function of hello, which points us my serverless project dash dev 
dash hello. Now we can actually check and see if that is completed by going over back into our AWS account and going back to the AWS console homepage and searching for Lambda. Inside here, we can search by last modified and we can now see that two minutes ago, we built my surplus project dash dev dash hello. If we go into here and scroll down, we can see that this is the code that we had in that file earlier. This is great as it means that we have successfully deployed our serverless file and we can change code inside these kind of functions so that they all deploy up to our AWS account successfully. So thank you for watching this video where we've learned how we can create a new serverless project using serverless templates. We've learned what makes up a serverless project, the serverless YAML file and all of the config inside that. We've then deployed it and seen it being created in our AWS account. If you've liked this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you want to see another video on serverless, check it out down here. Or if you want to learn how to create a serverless API, check out the link down here or in the description. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.